if, uh, if you want to know anything about the brain, this lady is it. She knows every inch, quarter inch, half inch of the brain that you can ever imagine. And she does some incredible things with the water and her practice. She's been around for many years doing what she, do, what she does the best. And it gives me great pleasure to bring on stage right now Dr. Corrine Allen. Thank you, Welcome, Dr. It's all yours. We're going to talk about some ways that we can enhance our brains, and you're going to see in practice how we do this and how this amazing magic water has helped so many people with their brain. We're going to tell you about several of the people that have come through the program. This is a little girl named Chloe, and she had about half of her brain removed on the left-hand side because she had constant seizures that would not stop. And so the only way that medical science knew to stop that was through uh, taking that part of the brain out. That left her kind of hemiplegic, and um, they called her cerebral palsy, and she was just a precious little girl and had a lot of issues because of that now that the brain wasn't there all the way. This is Jeannie. Jeannie came to us when her parents called me with a plea for help and said, my daughter has severe depression, anxiety. She won't come out of her room. She has anorexia. She's very suicidal and totally shut down. Literally, she would stay in her room with the blinds drawn day after day. She was in her 30s, and the parents were terrified that they were going to lose her. This was going on since she was a teenager. So it was one of our little autistic children. And this is a common physician behavior, screaming, yelling all the time in their severe cases. Uh, she was nonverbal. She never acted like a normal child, and she had delayed development in all areas. Then we had Jason. He was a lovely young man already in his late 20s, early 30s. He also had seizures very often, developmental and social delays. He was very slow in his speech, couldn't get the words out. People thought he was more retarded. That really bothered him because he could get it inside, but he couldn't get it out. Temper tantrums and anxiety, and his life was just not coming together. Yvette was a beautiful young lady. Now we got her at about 15, 14. She had a skateboard accident. Um, they were building a house. This brother built a little ramp on the porch. She fell off of it, cracked her head open, and died. They believed in the resurrection power of the Lord, and they prayed, and she came back to life. She was pretty much a vegetable, but they continued not giving up that faith and that hope and brought her through many, many um, phases of her development with alternative therapies, and I got her when she was pretty much able to walk and talk and learn, and, and uh, she just needed some finishing touches. She had delays. She had self-image problems. She had a severely damaged optic nerve, and she had balance and motor problems. Then we deal with uh, Matt and Bethany, who were adults, or uh, Matt, I think, was already in his teenage years. Brittany, Bethany was a, an adult. And we see many help for them. They don't get all the way well, but we can see a lot of changes can be produced for them. Our job is not to just give them 12 days and 30 days at home of intense therapy. We want them to have permanent changes. We want to change their life because when we change their life, we're going to change the life of their family as well. So here's the way we do it. We have all these therapies that we integrate. They're all alternative. They're all dealing with the energy frequencies. We use light, sound, and motion. This bed moves. It's wonderful. And you have this light above you that has about 3,000 frequencies, and they're programmed for whatever um, issues are going on in the brain. You have music coming up under the bed, through the bed, through speakers, which feel like you're getting a massage when it hits the bass notes. We have an auditory program that integrates and helps stimulate their visual pathways, their auditory pathways, because they all have sensory problems. And then we have a magnet, and we do magnetic fields. So that room is a very energetic room and a very powerful room. And they do that the whole process in the dark. Um, we do foot detox, and every time we can, we bring the parents in and have them come and share in whatever therapies we can with the people. We do reflex therapy. We do a lot of different reflexes. We do them with different things. We do them with lasers. We do them by hand. These are more of the reflexes that we do. We teach the parents how to do them. We do have hyperbaric that we offer, and we offer them good food. 
Remember, you can't just have good water, which is very important for the brain. You have to have good food. We give them a dairy-free and a wheat-free. We give them lots of raw food in the forms of very luscious salads. We do a lot of movement therapy. In fact, the brain moves so fast and the brain wants to help you so fast that sometimes just doing some of these balance work, you get a connection almost instantly. It's we do the trampoline, and this uh, young man was very autistic, and you can see us in coding. First of all, we help them to get the pathway, and then after a while, they just get it, and you can see him there. There he goes. At first, they couldn't, they were all over the place, but it begins to hit the brain and begin to go. Now, we come to one of the most important things in the entire program, and that is the water. The water that we use is alkaline ionized, microclustered water. When we added this about five years ago, things really began to change, and we have to have all the pHs. We actually use 859095 and 115 and 25. We use everything in the program. And it, it is amazing what has happened, and we give them 16, 18 ounce glasses, and after a therapy, maybe a light therapy or a trampoline, go in and drink your water, and they drink that whole thing. Why is alkaline ionized water so important and the most important thing? Because your brain is 80% water. Can you imagine getting through your day with only 20% of your ability to walk, 20% of your ability to think, 20% of anything, 20% of your clothes on? That might put it there. What in the world would you use if you could only have 20%? Well, it's very, very important. So this alkaline water facilitates the hydration. You're going to get pretty hydrated when you have to do these exercises. You need energy. Almost 100% of the people come to us with little to no energy. They have poor digestion. They need detoxification. They need inflammation. They have free radicals everywhere, and they need oxygenation. So this hydration, this is a uh, picture of a hydrated and a dehydrated brain. Movement therapy, you know, when you're jumping all the time and you're moving and crawling and creeping, that's a lot of work. And I'll tell you, we needed some way to quickly energize these people who, for the most part, didn't have energy to begin with. It enhanced their performance and it allows them to drink the water and you don't slush it around. That was the most incredible thing. You know that it's microclustered immediately when you have got that water and you can go jump and it doesn't slush in your stomach and you know that this is the only water that gets directly inside the cell not just around the cell this is my daughter who was one of um, my reasons why I learned this and had motivation she was born with asphyxiation at birth she didn't have enough oxygen I had a home birth and um, I was very concerned about her. I was already working on things for the brain for my clients and understanding that a lot of things like Epstein-Barr and Lyme and all these things were coming from a brain injury. And I realized that she did have significant loss of oxygen, she was blue, and that she needed some help very early on. So we developed the program around her and um, by the time we started this phase of the program with the light, sound, and motion, she was pretty well um, developed and through a lot of her brain injury. And you may meet her. She's here today with me. And when you see a young lady with me, that is her. She's 24 today. We have got to get water in our children. Don't give them juice. Don't give them sodas. Give them water. Digestion is so important. It's so big in the autistics and in the developmentally delayed because they get a lot of brain issues when your digestion and your elimination isn't working right. We do too, but theirs is heightened. And so they need, um, the stomach normally needs three to four hours to get like tap water or bottled water to make it available. And the alkaline water pushes the nutrients into the system so they're more readily available. So we can take, we take a glutathione after every therapy because every time you do a, a brain enhancing therapy, and including like exercise, which enhances our brains, you are gonna use up glutathione. If you do not have enough reserve glutathione to make the new brain cells, you don't make those new connections. So we found that out in the program and so we'll give them that with a big glass of water and the reason it's absorbed immediately is because the water carries it in. Water is the major factor in enzyme processes. Enzymes are thousands and thousands of functions and 
um, activities in the body all day long and we need those enzymes to work particularly in the brain and in the digestion so water is most important during the final stage of elimination as well if we get constipation we get crabby people we don't want that and here is just a picture of the um, the smaller clusters they can easily get into the cells and folks that that is something that is so important and we kind of take it for granted after after we drink the water for a while but how many of you ever feel like Ugh, I just drank too much you can even drink 16 18 ounces you don't feel like that do you because it's immediately going in and results most of you will identify with this the stools are cleaner when the water is taken on a regular basis and it detoxifies the lactic acid and so they're doing a lot of muscle work that they haven't been doing and they're never going to have sore muscles the ionized water is about half the size so it penetrates the cellular memories and it speeds up the waste removal from the tissues so it's very very important alkaline ionized microclustered water age and detoxification we're moving a lot of drugs out of the system and there's increased secretion and we do a toxic metal detox and somebody uh, we were talking yesterday about the detox from that we've discovered a technique to use light to um, with frequency to move the metals out we've seen miraculous results moving lead poisoning we had a a uh, neurologist come in who had severe lead poisoning was in bed for about six eight years the day after we did the detox took one time to get the lead out she was like full of energy able to do full crawling able to move like she was a normal person now the water was significant we needed that water directly after that flush and constantly to keep flushing she had no negative signs at all except a little bit of fatigue and due to the logarithmic scale of the pH, a small change in pH has a large effect. So we can detox the pesticides and the drugs and the carcinogens and the neurotoxins. And we often use the 11.5 water to help flush out things. Because here's a secret about the 11.5. If you're feeling quite well and you don't have a lot of things going on, you may feel a little nauseous if you take more than maybe a couple ounces. But if you are really sick like we have people with very strong EMF poisoning or you know the autistics or they've had strokes or whatever but there's a lot of free radicals going on in the body they can drink a ton of it a cup two cups a quart and feel fantastic after it so and when we discovered that we we saw how important it was to use it because it was so helpful in the detox and we want those cells to be hyper alkalized and we can raise what's called voltage by adding that 11.5 water because it is such high or we'll call it low ORP but I'm calling it high in terms of its ability to handle a lot of energy and put a lot of voltage into the system now there's something that we've um, discovered and it's been around for a while it's called aerotoxic syndrome and this is contaminated air on the plane my daughter flew out here with me on another plane and she said you know mom they had that stuff that TCP on the plane I could smell it and I said oh, that's the same airlines that this pilot came to us with and maybe it's a common thing in their planes but it's very common on the airplanes if you ever smell smelly socks or something that smells weird on the airplane it is the TCP cover your your nose and do pray that you don't get poisoned because it's highly neurotoxic the cabins um, <clears throat> people in the cabins the crew and the pilots are getting poisoned with it and up to 200,000 passengers a year are getting neurotoxic poison this is a pilot that came to us and you can see on the left she's not able to balance too well she had actually fallen quite a few times just recovered from knee surgery she could not go back to work <clears throat> then you see her on the right hand side she's walking on the balance beam with perfect balance she left there in 12 days with total ability to function mentally and physically and balance and go back to work as a pilot the air is drawn out from the engine and that's where it comes from the fumes come into the cabin and it's this hydraulic fuel leak that causes these toxic chemicals they're aware of it and Boeing is one that um, makes these chemicals and they know it exists it's just that it's been very hard to um, pin it down 
And these uh, TCP and the organophosphates are what are causing the neurotoxic syndrome. Now, very quickly, we're going to go through what is causing um, what kind of symptoms because if you ever talk to airline personnel or whatever, you're going to sometimes find that they have friends that are not there because they're too sick. They get fatigued, they get asthma symptoms, balance, they can have blurred vision, they can have coughing or confusion problems, diarrhea, um, feeling intoxicated, headaches, lightheadedness, dizziness, loss of consciousness, memory impairment, nausea, they can have personality changes, respiratory failure, seizures, shaking and tremors, and tightness in the chest and tingling and tinnitus. A lot of these could sound like other, other things. And so when they go to the doctors, they don't necessarily find it or label it as neurotoxic syndrome. This is crawling on the left. Look at how she's got her feet in the air. And just through doing the reflexes, just through teaching the brain how to do this, she's then able to do it properly on the right-hand side. Detoxification and neutralizing the toxins. How do we do that? Again, remembering, just put this all in a big glass of water. Because we do colored lights, and then water. We do reflexes, we do homeopathics, we do toxic metal detox, we do essential oils, we do emotional trauma clearings, we do neural massage, we do strict dietary changes for them, we do the trampoline. And then we do and we get their efficient and improved detoxification from the alkaline microclustered water so that there's no healing crisis. If you're in the health field, you understand this, that when the poisons are coming down too fast, you have a negative reaction, it feels like you're getting worse, you may have low back pain, you may have a headache, you may feel very tired. Those can be de um, detox reactions called a healing crisis. But nothing supports cleansing for you every day, like washing your cells with the best water. It hydrates the blood and the lymph so that the toxins can move rapidly through the detoxification pathways. And when the quality and the efficiency of the water is improved, the detoxification pathways will move the best. And that's why you have to have the best. You are detoxing. Do you know when you wake up in the morning how much water you need? 32 ounces. When I get ready in the morning, I go fill a cup, get a cup, or I take a quart jar when I'm at home, and I just start drinking that in the time that it takes me to get ready. And by the time I'm ready to take my morning supplements or my morning um, brew, I, um, not coffee though, my supplement brew, I've already had a lot of water. Now, we want this water because inflammation, inflammation, if you've ever had a brain injury, if you have even had premature birth, or you had a hit on your head and it was 20, 30, 40 years ago, you probably have inflammation still, because it doesn't usually just go away. Brain inflammation is a very critical problem, and it needs to be dealt with, because here's what science says, that you can have depression and anxiety. 40 million people today suffer from that, and it comes from, a major cause of it is the chronic inflammation. Inflammation lowers serotonin. So think about anybody that's taking serotonin-enhancing drugs. They have a lot of inflammation, and it causes more inflammation and more free radicals, more of the plus um, ions if you have it for a long period of time. And any time you have any kind of expression of a neurological problem, it is because you have inflammation in the brain, and it needs to be stopped. Now, what are some ways that we get inflammation? Well, premature births. Uh, if there was a fever in the mother or she was sick, if you had been in the military and there were explosions going off or you had post-traumatic stress, um, traumatic injuries, hits to the head, and again, a car accident, or somebody bonked you on the head, or you had a football injury, um, toxic exposures. I've had people in the program who have smelled pesticides or their mother ate um, food that was not clean, fruits and vegetables. She went on a very, quote, uh, raw, good diet, but she didn't clean the pesticides off, and that concentration caused very severe brain injury in her child. And then low glutathione. We talked some about how that is important. Once there's inflammation in the brain, now we talked, some of you have heard me say about the blood-brain barrier. Anytime you've had an incident to the brain, you have what opens the blood-brain barrier, and that does not close by itself. And in research we'll find, and we have found, that there's always like 5, 10, 15 percent of that blood-brain barrier that's really functioning. You need it at about 60, 70, or 80 percent functioning to be able to stop getting smells bother you, people bother you, sounds bother you. Um, 
you're tired easily, you get sick easily, you have a blood-brain barrier issue going on. People that can't drink the water. You have people that you know that can't drink the water right away? They have a blood-brain barrier. Don't just jam it down them and don't ever, ever give anybody 9.5 because you have no idea if they have a blood-brain barrier opening, you can throw them into a very severe detox and they will never talk to you again because that is your protection. And so when you have things like autism and Alzheimer's and attention deficit and diabetes and autoimmune and trauma and exposure to toxic chemicals and infections, you definitely have a blood-brain barrier opening. And we have a special little trick that we use with an essential oil from Ecuador called Copaiba that will just put above the ears and it will instantly start an energetic closure of that blood-brain barrier. And if you do it over time, it starts to give the body that stimulation to the nervous system and to heal it. Uh, antioxidants reduce brain inflammation. We want that. And we have the most potent, who wants to take pills all day long? Who wants to take those expensive antioxidant drinks all day long? We just use water. How simple can that be? And you know that we want the negative ORP between 300 and 800 because that's going to give us more voltage. The more voltage you have, the more power you have in the body to heal itself. I had a cool example. My sister had a brain surgery last October, and I was not able to have free access to her, but I was allowed into her intensive care on the, about the second day, and her blood pressure was so high they wouldn't let her out of intensive care. And I had my bag there with a lot of my water in it. And I said, oh my goodness, you don't even have a glass here. Where's your water? And, you know, I said to the nurse who's in the window behind me watching everything I'm doing, where's your glass? And he's over there, you know, so I went. So we found a glass, filled it, and watched the monitor. I wished I'd had a video of it. If I'd have known, I'd have done it. And one glass. Now she was like 5% hydrated at that point because she hadn't had water for almost 18 hours. And can you imagine brain surgery and they don't give them water? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, well it was more than that because she was in there a day already. I was the second day. So it was quite amazing. So I gave her this glass of 9.5. She was already drinking the water some. She hasn't gotten it here yet totally. But that monitor jumped 20 points down. It was amazing. And I just thought, wow, I've heard that story of how it lowers the blood pressure and how it, it lowers. And there I saw it right before my very eyes. And you know that she stayed. I gave her about eight glasses. I lined them up and I said, you be sure and drink these. And that's all they gave her. I wasn't allowed to give her any more. And do you know that she stayed to about 50% hydrated through the next day? That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Alkaline water is that best antioxidant and that free radical scavenger. And we all know the, the uh, chart on how the pH works. And we know that the brain needs oxygen, needs to be alkaline, and we need that water of alkaline ionized water because it carries acid. I have a, a series that I've done on your brain on water. And we also have the science and practice of electrolyzed reduced water. And in there, I give you the research studies. It's now on video. It's brand new for you. But we have all this available for you to show you the research. Depression, um, anxiety, anorexia, ADD. They're all related to acidosis and inflammation and free radicals. It's in the research, folks. It's not something we have to make up. It's the most important nutrient in the brain, and it's going to raise that oxygen in the body and in the brain. It contains more oxygen, and the pH increases, so does the predominance of the hydroxyl or the negative ions, and that's what we want. And drinking it gives us that oxygen, and once it's inside the body, we're going to get more of those negative ions, and we're going to get more of the negative hydrogen ions is what we want. And the higher the pH, the more the negative hydrogen, the more negative hydrogen. You know what hydrogen is. You know what a bomb is, right? That's a lot of energy going. <laughs> okay, so the higher the pH, the lower, or you should, could say the more negative, the, we want those negative ions, so we're going to get more powerful negative ions the higher the pH is. We're going to get DNA repair. The research shows that alkaline ionized water can protect and it prevents DNA damage. We're getting exposed 
to chemicals every day. There's chemicals in this room. There's EMF. That is a, a producing a lot of free radicals. Alkaline water can protect from the toxic effects of free radicals which cause the DNA damage. We're getting more babies born now today than ever with DNA damage. And they go, well, it's just genetic. We don't know where it came from, right? You've heard of it. They go, where does it come? And yes, DNA damage can be restored and repaired because you're making new cells every day and you can reprogram those cells, absolutely. Here's a young man that came to us and um, he, his father's whole goal in life was to just give him a good life and just to provide for him. But they found us and they brought him to the program and he came and he'd walk like this. So we did hours and hours of reflex work and hours and hours of work to reestablish connections in that brain. And he became very, very excited about getting his brain back. And, you know, he, had, he came about two or three times to it. Now, this young man... He walks with authority. He walks with confidence. He can speak to you like a normal person. He has a job. He has a car. He has a girlfriend. He's gone on uh, trips overseas. He's in college, and he has a life. And wow. <laughs> Why is this alkaline ionized microclustered water so important? Because we make them work hard, and the staff works hard too. We all are oh, needing the water, so we drink it. We need good sleep. You get good sleep when you drink the kind of water we have. Many participants are low in energy, or they're severe. They're all severely dehydrated. Everybody comes in dehydrated. One of the reasons is because of the flying, but another reason is that's just their style of life. They don't really think about water. Most of them have never even experienced the oxygenized, energized water. And we know that the brain needs 80% um, water. It's full of water. We've got to hydrate the brain. This was a young man that came with OCD, very severe. And he had significant changes. And here are some of the intense therapies we do. They're actually kind of fun for the people. Um, they'll do work on the ball. They'll do crawling. Here's a gal that was paralyzed. You're going to see her in a minute, who actually was able to get down on the floor and crawl. This is another gal that came to us with Asperger. She was severe. She had never run in her life. She was able to run about the two blocks from the clinic to where we feed them. And uh, she, would, she had so much energy that she would go back to the clinic at night and continue to do exercises so that she could speed up her healing. It was like she woke up. Her parents also brought her a couple times and she made spectacular improvement. What are the signs of dehydration? They're your and my signs too. When, when you get fatigued, when I, when I lose a thought, I go, oh, water. Get that water in you. No, I didn't lose that thought, but you want that water. That's your sign that you've got some brain fog. When you get angry too easily or you get upset or you have mood swings or pain, when you start to get premature aging, you've got a problem with hydration. When your skin starts to wrinkle, you know, you can put the 5-6-0 water on it, and it's beauty water, and it will stimulate your skin. Your skin is an organ. It's alive. It needs to be refreshed and, and um, hydrated. When you have memory loss and high blood pressure, these are very easy. These are very simple things that nature giving us a warning. Nature's giving us a blessing of all these signs, and we know how to fix it. Brain injury and dehydration. The literature is a plethora of how these problems, OCD, autism, people with um, being on addicts, uh, brain injured, they, they drink little or no water. That's just a part of their life. It's like, they're kind of like brain dead. And so we have to wake up that brain. We want to accentuate their ability to think and to function and so many of these people have never even drunk water. And they have chronic dehydration means we have to really push the water. Sometimes we do little contests to help them to get the water. And to make matters worse, most of the people are drinking things that are substitutes for water that have chemicals in them, making more issues in their life. And so we want them to um, continue to drink and drink. And we here's one of the things that we do that really helps um, with our food. We soak our food. Whether it's organic or not, we soak all the food in 11.5 water for 10 minutes, always in a metal bowl, never in a plastic, because plastics are made out of petrochemicals, and the 11.5 will draw from that. And it makes the food taste amazing. 
And your food will last in the refrigerator two to three weeks longer if you do that. If you do things in the garden, we grow a lot of our own food, and we can soak onions and stop the mold so it can be stored in the root cellar and not go bad. And sometimes we'll use frozen organic juices, and we'll add the 8.5 to it. Soaking, these, these were beans that were many years old, and this took five hours to soak these pinto beans. We use them for tacos and burritos and things. And in five hours, in the 11.5 water, look what happened. We had a sprout on it. That is amazing. The amount of oxygen that went in there to do that was just amazing. Oops. Once in a while, we get people that have um, little accidents with the fish oil because omegas are very important to a couple things. Their omega oil is very important to the brain function. There have actually been cases. There was one in the miners, I think it was in Virginia, um, that worked in the deep in the mines that had total shutdown of his brain, his organs, kidney, and they gave him like a quart of the very omega oil that we use. They re-established re and re-activated um, all of his organs so that he didn't have any damage. It was amazing. So we give them this very same omega oil, and sometimes it goes right through them, and in this case it got on her bed sheets and on her bed blanket, and you can't get that out with just washing it, and it causes a mess in your washer. So we decided I would soak it in the laundry sink and using 11.5. It took it out in just a few hours, smelled like it was freshly dried in the sun. It was so here we have what are the results from the brain camp. This is Yuan, who is a medical doctor, um, nor originally from China, but now lived in the United States. She had gone in for a tumor on her cerebellum. And that surgery went badly, and never she never recovered. She became... Uh, paralyzed on her left side, her left eye, left side of her face. And after the 12 days, we, we used the uh, light sound um, kind of things that we do. And we got her left side functioning so much that she could eat and chew. She could brush her own teeth. She started having vision in her left eye. And she started being able to use her left side so that she could stand in a mirror and do her own grooming in the morning. It was pretty spectacular. Here she is. Here's how we start them. She's held pretty closely with a belt on the trampoline. Her husband's right there with her. And then she's able to do it on her own. She was very cognizant inside, although she couldn't speak very well. She was very cognizant of the fact that she was getting well and that there was hope for her, and she worked very hard. So she would walk, oftentimes with somebody right beside her, like you see on the left with her husband, and holding that belt tightly within nine days. There she is on the right. Nobody's within six feet of her. She's totally balanced. That's unbelievable. And she was walking. She walked there by herself. And, of course, she had the walls. We want them to always be safe. But this lady, the husband said to me, you know, we've been all over the world for nine years. And in nine days, you did more than anybody did in nine years. <laughs> Emily's eyes had never tracked. And a lot of people have issues with the eye, one eye, one out. We didn't particularly work on it. We just did the therapy. And then we had our little Johnny, who was so severely autistic. Look at this. It took a grandmother and a grandfather and a mother and a father. They would rotate. So there was always two with him at one time because he was so severe. On the right-hand side, here he is at the end of the program. He's with me. He's following my directions. He's in the room alone. He doesn't need anybody to control his behavior. So where would you go if you had spent uh, thousands of dollars on therapy all over the world and you'd endured hundreds of hours of therapy with minimal results? You were taking drugs, they weren't getting anything but masking, and you felt hopeless or helpless. Well, you could spend 12 days in the brain camp and transform your life, like Jeannie did. Jeannie now has married. She's got a, a solid relationship. Her mom just emailed me the other day and said, thank you so much for saving my daughter's life. She now has twins. They're a year old. She's absolutely integrated back into life like she never had before, and she's whole. <laughs> then we have Jason. I'll tell you a little secret. The number one, number one, Correction for seizures is this water. Every single person that has seizures is dehydrated. And a dehydrated episode will cause it to flow. 
and to come and to have a seizure. The second thing is we're eating breath mints, gum, and toothpaste that have aspartame. Aspartame will cause a seizure. Just look it up. It will trigger a seizure, and it is neurotoxic. It will cause damage in the brain. So Jason's seizures were pretty much controlled and gone by the time he was done, and his speech went from, I am okay, to, how are you today, Jason? I am just fine, thank you. He totally was able to process that speech pathway. And then Yvette, this was such a beautiful story because Yvette, self-confidence, she went on to finish high school, but the coolest thing in the whole world, which we didn't expect, she did hyperbaric a lot. And um, her optic nerve regenerated. Now, we saw it there. We saw the changes in the test that we give them. It's a visual test. We saw the changes because she could see but she went back to her, her ophthalmologist and he said, your optic nerve is restored. So we knew that what we had done was verified.